This is HVAC Refrigeration Heat Load Calculations, HET 191, Week 7, Calculating Cooling Loads. The objective of this uh, week assignment is to help the HVAC learner to be able to develop appreciation for the importance of the Manual J, understand the different types of issues that can affect heating loads, analyze the construction of a home and determine the type of heat gains that the home may have, use charts, tables, and forms to calculate the heat gain of a home. In this introduction, in the air conditioning um, field, we have equipment that is needed to maintain the temperature in a home in the spring and summertime because of the higher temperatures. However, the air conditioning system must be sized correctly or there can be major operational uh, issues with the equipment. With this in mind, a technician should be uh, understanding of the uh, industry standards and procedures uh, to be able to match the equipment with the heat gain of a structure. Without knowing the, uh, the right heat gain, the equipment could be oversized or undersized, which can uh, affect the function of the cooling of a uh, structure or of a home especially when the temperature is extreme outdoors. So in the terms we're going to discuss, similar to last week, is the manual J, heat transfer multiplier, latent heat loads, design outdoor temperatures, design indoor temperature, and net wall area. When we look at heat gain calculations, there's many things we need to look at. Some of the things is based on the uh, the temperature outdoors, not only the outdoors, based on the, uh, the daytime uh, conditions because at nighttime usually there's no sun shining through the windows uh, which can add additional heat but we do look at solar gain and solar gain um, will add additional heat which is usually radiant heat that we need to consider to help um, with the uh, sizing of the equipment for the air conditioning system and a lot of other things we need to consider such as the thermal mass of the materials which is made out of and uh, fenestration loads, which is because of the sun shining through the windows or adding heat uh, loads based on the, uh, the color of the materials and uh, the loads based on the um, uh, conditions of the um, of the material itself, how it uh, conducts heat will affect how um, heat gain calculations will be done for the summer operation. So therefore, Fenestration heat gains is uh, the type of loads that generate it based on the temperature outdoors or the temperature difference, but also based on uh, how materials absorb um, uh, energy from the sun. And we look at it differently than windows because windows actually transmit um, radiant heat through it and which can add uh, additional heat load to the inside of the structure. So all these are um, made to to help uh, understand that heat loads for wintertime and summertime are differently looked at because of the, uh, the amount of energy that is transmitted from this, the sunlight. So because of this, we look at windows, something called solar heat gain coefficient. And we abbreviate it uh, as SHGC, which is the ratio where one is the maximum heat gain that can come through uh, windows, and zero is the least amount. And we look at this as percentages. The uh, this lo uh, loads, for example, if you use like 0.4, means that 40% of the available solar heat is coming through the windows. Uh, the shading coefficient. Um, we abbreviate that uh, SC, is a ratio where one is the solar gain through a single pane of glass, uh, which not including the, uh, the frames or sashes, uh, but if the solar uh, coefficient is uh, for a clear double pane glass is, for example, 0.87, then it has 87% of solar gain through the, that type of glass. We look at uh, table uh, 3A, and basically this is one of the tables you find in the 
uh, manual J and it listed out these different calculations that you need to look at such as for um, uh, bay windows, garden windows, fence doors, single pane windows and things like that. But as we look at that, we look at uh, these two different factors. We look at the U value, we look at the, uh, the solar coefficient, and the solar uh, heat gain coefficient as um, for different types of materials and uh, windows. And more than that, we look at the orientation, or what we call the exposure. And this is based on uh, the, uh, the direction of the windows are faced, or the materials are facing, uh, which can gain more or less heat based on the direction of the house is facing, or the walls, or the materials are facing. So this is a very critical thing to look at for the summertime, which is different than the winter, because winter uh, is cold outdoors, even though the sun uh, is, is still shining some days in, in the wintertime, but not as much during the summer. But mostly, the sun will actually help us in the wintertime. While the, the sun in the uh, summertime will actually add additional heat that we need to get rid of. And because of that reason, we need to uh, look at these loads. And it's how we use it, basically, very simply. Uh, for example, this we had a, a 3 by 4 double hung window, had wood frame, double pane, um, is facing the west, and has no internal shading which is 12 square feet. We multiply it at 3 times 4. And then we fill in the, the, the information based on what we have so far. To figure out the number of BTUs, we take the square feet, multiply times the uh, heat transfer factor, and the way we look at this, we look at this chart, and we go that it's facing west, um, and the solar coefficient, uh, we're looking at the opening uh, based on the TD, the TD is 20, let's say it's 95 degrees outside, 75 degrees inside, which gives us a temperature difference for cooling for 20 degrees, follow that down, and they come to 73. Multiply that out, that one window uh, that is only 12 square feet will transmit 876 BTUs per hour. This is another that we find for windows as a uh, table and chart. And it's interesting because if the window is actually sheeted by the eaves, we need to f determine how much solar gain is going through it on the, um, the, uh, the worst case scenario, on the warmest day of the year, the most sun coming through based on the position of the sun at that time of the summer. Uh, we look at this. So there's things we need to consider. If you look at the diagram, uh, you see the uh, the side of a house, you see the window, you see the pitch of the sun, but we need to fill these numbers in, such as X, Z, H, Y, U, and S. And all that comes from is that taking measurements of the house. How far is your sophic and eaves uh, go to, to the face of the house? What is the distance of the sun? That's a uh, formula that we actually determine based on in the summertime. But going through using the church, it actually going step by step, we determine that by measuring the height of the window, the amount of space between the top of the window to the bottom of the eaves, um, to the uh, uh, how far the eaves away from the um, the sophic from the end of the, uh, the the wall where the windows are at. As we fill that information in, we will determine um, the amount of angle and how much solar gain do we need to determine for that uh, window. So this is one of the uh, tables and charts we will use for um, determining this. This is found on page 109. And here's an example. We worked out a, a quick example. We said the same window was 3 by 4 double hung wood. And by looking at this, going from on this, um, this table, where it says shaded glass area calculation, we start out with a very simple thing to start filling the information you already have, such as uh, the direction of the glass it faces, it's facing the south. The overhang distance, you say you got a three foot overhang, which is B, and you get that from X. We physically had to measure that. Um, uh, C, was the um, the SLM value at latitude and we look at a chart to get that information to get that latitude and if you look just below the on the chart below this uh, this table we said midsummer shade line multiplier 
value, the SLM, shade line multiplier. And since it's facing the south, and we need to look, there's a chart where we get the latitudes from, and let's say Chicago's is at 42 degree latitude. So we will go to uh, 45, between 45 and 40. Uh, it's very close between both of those. Uh, so we could go with 40 and give you one multiplier, which gives you the higher number. So that's where we get the 2.6 for C. And as we go down, it says uh, S line to overhang. And what we're doing is multiplying that number, X, which is 3, times 2.6 to get that 7.8. And as we look f uh, down, we actually go through in each step to get that uh, final number. So on page um, 108, we look at table uh, 3C, and this is just another table we use for looking at uh, uh, glass and, uh, and determining the amount of heat transfer f uh, from that. And this is looking at a closer picture of it to give you an idea. We use the example that is listed here to uh, determine uh, how much uh, heat transferred through it. And this is for basically looking at skylights. But one thing we need to actually determine, either from a blueprint or physically measuring it, the pitch of the roof, is the degree angle of the horizon to determine uh, how much heat transfer that would go through um, that skylight. And it we have to look at the orientation of it because the orientation of that window would determine how much uh, heat transfer would go through that. And of course, um, depending if it's facing, it could be more or less. And also uh, because uh, doors so, uh, can actually uh, transfer uh, solar gain through it, we look at the type of door and the construction of it. And, and from that point, we will uh, look at the transfer value through this table. And this, of course, this table found in, um, in table 4A. We're listing out these type of heat load calculations as we uh, go through a cooling load. So as we explained before, of course, the cooling uh, TD, the CLTD, is the temperature difference in the summertime between the indoor temperature and outdoor design temperature. Of course, we need to look on the table to determine what is that number uh, based on where the, the structure is located. And of course, in this project, we're looking at Waukegan as the, the factor and using Waukegan as the summer and winter heat load uh, design outdoor temperatures. And here is um, looking at uh, opaque panels where walls and partitions, heat gain through it in table 4A. And this is just one um, picture we can use to help uh, determine uh, the heat load through it. And you have to be very accurate as we look at this because there's many different types of uh, uh, construction. So we have to look at the, uh, the, the construction of it, what type of outside material it is, what type of insulation we're using in the walls, and what they're using on the inside of the house. Uh, to determine the type of transfer through it. And as we go through, we need to, uh, of course, record every uh, bit of information we have, even the group number, because uh, as you go through, it will make a, a difference in how we would determine the calculations with the, in, the, uh, in our tables as we are um, recording all the data from these different tables. And for example, just to give you how this works, and we just look through, we go through the different columns, we look at the construction number, and it's a good thing, like I said, to record those numbers because these numbers will uh, make a difference and because you will go from table to table and chart to chart to uh, look for this. And if you already have it written down, know what you're using, it would be easier to go back to it to, uh, to gather the information at a later time. So. So we we'll look at this uh, example, and let's say you've got R11, you've got 2 by 4 stud construction. And we say that there's uh, R11 insulation in it, and if you go through either brick or siding type of uh, outside exterior finish, will give us a certain um, uh, heat transfer multiplier, or we could say the U value. But be sure to use the group number information too as we go through. And this exposed walls for the cooling values. 
and using a medium color, we can see that um, that the multipliers uh, would change somewhat based on the type of color of the, uh, the sheeting outdoors. Now, here's a closer look at that just going through and just get uh, a basic example to see how this exposed wall, uh, how it would be affected based on our temperature difference from indoors and outdoors. Of course, in the summertime, uh, there is no heat gain through the basement walls when it's more than two feet below grade. Uh, the reason why, because usually the temperature is pretty much balanced and a lot of times it is uh, helping us with our heat uh, gain because the temperature um, of the other side of the wall will a lot of times be lower than the indoor temperature and so we actually have a heat loss many times on a very hot day in the summertime. Another uh, heat gain we need to consider is the uh, heat picked up through ceilings because we know that ceilings uh, above an attic can gra uh, gain great deal of heat through the uh, a larger temperature difference because um, the attic may be um, many degrees higher and for example it may be 130 degrees compared to being only 95 degrees of outdoor ambient and because of that we need to look at uh, the ceiling transfer factor based on the um, uh, the type of insulation that you have in the attic and if you don't have any insulation in the attic in this area we uh, really uh, going to have to size up the heating and cooling equipment uh, drastically because of those temperature difference especially in, in the summertime because of uh, the high temperature difference that um, we will uh, end up gaining great deal of, of heat so of course we use our design um, temperature difference for indoor outdoor and as we look at this the same uh, example goes for floors if it's uh, above non-conditioned space such as non-heated basements or non-cooled basements or uh, crawl spaces and that area uh, need to be considered uh, because um, it may uh, have uh, a great temperature difference that we need to look at because of the heat gain uh, through it but of course um, if it's insulated, we need to consider the type of insulation used and how well it's constructed uh, or leakages and things like that because it can uh, affect how uh, this basement or crawl space can uh, allow heat to transfer through. And a lot of times if we look at even the leakages through the basement, if there's penetrations and things and if there's ductwork going through or heating equipment because the infiltration uh, can cause uh, additional amount of uh, heat transfer through. So these are uh, areas that we look in, but we cannot um, not bypass anything, not look past any type of uh, part of the house because every part of the house can have some type of heat gain um, through these different uh, um, areas dealing with walls, doors, ceilings, and of course floors. We talked about uh, fenestration earlier and but of course we get this information from the uh, manual J and not to go too much more details uh, through that but this is an example how we can look at uh, how to work through this uh, project so it is the example we have here just a couple different examples how we can uh, look at how he transferred through um, windows and how a eave on a house can actually benefit us from uh, gaining additional amount of heat because the shading area of the window. So as we look at uh, this the same example we go through and you can see a little bit closer um, of the, uh, the diagram we would get from uh, the manual D, manual J rather, and looking at the table 2A for the construction number and going through and using that information to gather um, the, the type of um, uh, information we need to determine the heat load through uh, that window. So we're looking at the type of glass, the construction of the, of the window, looking at the type of shading that it may have, and also even the time of the, uh, of the summer, such as midsummer, to get the maximum amount of uh, shading or uh, the maximum amount of that will add 
to the window because we know that throughout the summer the sun is repositioning itself and certain parts of the summer, early summer, that we get uh, more shading and toward the uh, uh, midsummer getting more then it start to shade off a little bit more again. So we actually have to look at um, that critically and not just to go past it because if it's not shaded by trees or other buildings that uh, we can end up undersizing our uh, cooling loads based on uh, solar gain. So as a closer look at the same example, uh, just take a look at it and we'll be able to, um, like I said, use the manual J for any factors that we may have. And this is a um, um, looking at the two worksheets, worksheet A, worksheet B, and um, if we use a uh, computer-generated software, we can just put these numbers in, and which is pretty quick. We'll be using a uh, uh, in our project a um, Excel spreadsheet through ACA that will uh, import a lot of this this information from uh, worksheet to another worksheet once we put the correct numbers in the first time, which will help us uh, coming through the calculations as you go through. So we talked about uh, heat transferred through uh, um, walls, which we call opaque panels, and basically it's just like we discussed uh, last week in the presentation as we went through heating loads, but in cooling loads the same things. Nothing really changed, but the only thing really changed was the uh, the temperature difference outdoors. Uh, so we look at those the same way and not spending too much time on this, that we need to understand that these cooling loads, uh, we look at the materials the house is constructed at, look at the tables, look at the, um, the different tables like 4B, or uh, 4A to get, gather this information uh, from the tables and, and plotting things in. But the biggest thing is that um, because the summer uh, TDs is smaller, but the solar um, heat or radiation can affect some of these different loads, such as windows, so transferring through it. So then again, here, the definition of the uh, the CLTD is the cooling load temperature different values for doors, floors, windows, um, ceilings, and we have to look at the uh, the group numbers for these um, walls and that is listed out in table 4A and 4B. And here's the uh, um, just a picture of table 4A and if you see how it's listed out, it if you go through it, it's kind of self-explanatory, but um, we look at this to determine, uh, like th this particular uh, page, is just for doors, uh, wooden doors and metal doors, doors and how the U value will be affected based on that type of construction of the door. Here's a closer look at it, so you can see a little bit better, um, and you'll be able to um, look at the uh, the exceptions that, that you have, such as uh, basement walls may be partially above grade and partially below grade. Because of that, we have to look at the basement walls completely separate. Here's another um, a closer look at the doors. And you can see that we look still look at the uh, design cooling temperature difference. And we look at the, uh, the daily ranges. And we look at how it can affect the heat transfer through a door. Here's the table 4A and we um, looking at the materials that the uh, construction of the walls and as we um, uh, go through this you can see that they have our value of 15 or 19 or 21 for these type walls and of course like you see that the numbers change drastically as the insulation value goes up. It's a closer look at the same uh, slide previously looked at. Here is the um, exposed walls uh, TD values for a medium color for walls. Here's a closer look again, taking that you could be able to see the numbers a little more clearer. Block infilt uh, infiltration loads and 
let's look at uh, non-engineered ventilation. In other words, you're not having a ventilator added to the house to bring f fresh air into the house. It's considered when the ventilation fans in your house is less than 50 CFMs, such as small bathroom fans or kitchen exhaust fans, which usually don't run continuously anyway. But if you have a mechanical ventilation system, we look at it differently. So we'll be looking at these three different things. The ACHs, which is the air changes per hour, the AGVs, which is the above uh, ground volume, above ground volume, anything above a basement, and the ACFs, which is the altitude correction factor. So we look at this and we um, look at the block infiltration uh, loads for cooling examples and if we look at it and it goes through the, the formulas that we will need to understand and go through to de determine these type of infiltrations or, or correction factors based on um, the amount of ventilation of infiltration inside of the home during the summertime. Of course even the altitude of the um, at sea level or let's say something in Denver, California uh, Denver uh, that may be uh, 2,000 feet above the um, uh, sea level. And that can affect how the pressure differences from inside and outside of, of a structure. And because of that, it can affect how uh, the, the leakage uh, in and out of the house. Of course, infiltration is the air coming into the house, while the exfiltration is the air leaving the house through uh, cracks or uh, any type of vents or exhaust fans and things that can be added to a home. So as we look at this and go through the uh, the envelope uh, infiltration it, in CFMs and it equals the the air changes per hour times the air above grade ventilation for the cooling divided by 60 and so as we look at that, we are uh, using it as a factor to determine the, the amount of air that is coming into the house that we need to uh, remove the heat from it to make it usable and to keep the temperature and the humidity, which is the latent loads, at a comfortable level. So as we go through these um, examples in these different formulas to determine uh, other factors besides just the walls but things that can enter the house uh, without our control. So here's a table 5A which is the default air changes values for three or four exposures and as we look at this we have to determine uh, the tightness of the house or the construction tightness and in the manual J it gives us five different uh, categories to look at and if you look at the, on this page at the bottom of it, it explains each one of these different types of building tightness and so if you go do an inspection of the house you need to uh, uh, definitely uh, record uh, the, the, how the house is constructed so you'll be able to look at and determine uh, which category you need to uh, figure a house at because if you do not you can easily make a, a drastic mistake because a tight house if you look for example if the uh, uh, the heated floor space is 900 or less and just look at that number a tight house is only a 0.21 while a loose house is a 1.29 it's almost a full factor one point factor uh, difference between um, a tight house and a loose house and if we didn't not consider that we can really uh, miscalculate the cooling load uh, for a house um, not even just figuring out the um, uh, just say how every house is, uh, is average. If you did that, it can uh, be very far off on either direction, either direction, because we do not want to oversize um, the, the cooling load, and we don't want to undersize the cooling load. And either one of those can make uh, a drastic difference in how the equipment will be sized. So, 
So in this table, table 5A, we're looking at it closer to the top portion of it so you can see a little bit better. And it's listed out the different categories of tightness of construction. They give you the floor area of heated space in square feet. And of course, the infiltration is CFMs for one fireplace. And so these are factors that can make a huge difference in different type of fireplaces places that could be in a house such as a house that has a tight fireplace which is completely sealed from the inside of the house use only outside air for combustion or a house that has a let's say an old style of fireplace that can be very leaky and I tell you the numbers are huge big differences so this part of it explains the tightness of uh, construction it's only a partial um, but anyway, you'll be able to look at this and be able to understand the different type of construction you may find at these type of homes. Internal gains are things that's inside the house that can affect the cooling load. A lot of these factors are things that normally you find in a house, such as appliances, uh, plants, animals, people. And because of these loads, we have to consider that when it especially when it's uh, not uh, is above average if you got a house with a lot of plants or you got a lot of large animals or you got a combination of both of those can affect the cooling loads so here are some of the things listed out um, of course every house gonna have appliances so that need to be always considered but if they say you got an aquarium in a house with uh, a very large one with uh, fish and other things that may be uh, cause evaporation and this evaporation from the plants or uh, aquariums or um, can cause uh, the uh, house load to increase in BTUs because the moisture has to be removed from the air because the moisture actually holds a great deal of heat and energy if you have a large family with a lot of people, we have to consider that because uh, the number of people in the house multiplied times the number of BTUs per person can add up to a large number. Here's looking at uh, internal loads again, uh, looking at appliances, uh, looking at um, um, the number of people in the house, uh, plants, and of course, like I say, uh, if you have large animals can be added to this too. Just this is a closer look at the same um, chart and just list things out in a little more detail. And here's the bottom of the chart, it's listing things out again, uh, give you an example how to figure out uh, these loads. A blower also, um, because a blower uh, calls velocity, velocity calls friction, friction calls heat. We need to look at that, but also because of the blower motor, since it's taking electrical energy, converting it to mechanical energy, and also creating some heat energy, that can add to um, heat gain to um, the house during the summertime. So yes, that do have a factor, and we can look at those factors. These factors dealing with windows is just going uh, over a couple of other things that we covered earlier. We can go through this very quickly because um, the things are we talked about. But these are the little these are the formulas that we need to know to understand how to determine uh, heat loss and heat gain. We talk about fenestration again, not to go too much detail, but using the tables and charts to help us determine that. Here's a chart again. Um, table uh, 3C1 looking at uh, skylights and here's some information for fenestration heat gains here's uh, table 3A1 again a closer look at it 